Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. So we're going to start moving towards uh, studying limits of functions and considering uh, this notion of continuity for functions uh, in this lecture. So far we've seen uh, sequences of numbers and how to look at limits of sequences of real numbers and then how those limits were powerful enough uh, to give you some very interesting uh, you know, possibilities for these numbers and to work with them. Okay, so we saw that, we saw how to compute limits, we saw the properties of taking limits, what happens when you take limits of a ratio, limits of product, limit of sum and all that. And then we also saw these recursions and how those are really, really useful. Okay, now we'll push further and start looking at functions. If you remember, one of the main things we wanted was to evaluate functions, like, you know, uh, raising things to the power, etc. And also understand the continuity property. What, what is it about the curve that when you draw like that, how, how do you mathematically characterize continuity, right? So we have not looked at that also. So those are things uh, we're going to do uh, in this topic. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is to understand A power B, okay? So maybe we all know A power B. Uh, there are various cases for A and B. So we're going to look at A and B being real numbers, okay? So this is important because this will give us uh, a wide class of functions and we use this A power B quite often when A and B are real. So we'll look at different cases and try and study how to compute A power B, uh, first of all, and how to think of sequences and limits and how is it connected to evaluating A power B, okay? So that's something we're gonna see uh, in this uh, lecture, okay? So first thing is, let's start with A power B when A is real and B is an integer, okay? So this is very easy uh, because A, B is an integer so a power b is simply multiplying a b times, okay? Because b is an integer, I can say things like b times, right? So I can write a power b as a times a power b minus one, and then simply repeat that to get a into a into a into a b times, I'll get a power b. Because b is an integer, this can be done. Well, b is a positive integer. I should be very careful when I say that. Uh, so I'm gonna say b is positive, okay? So let me make sure I add that here, positive. Okay, maybe I should write a little bigger. Positive is our assumption here. Uh, so, uh, so that's not, it's not too bad because the properties here are also quite nice. Uh, a power zero is one in the exponential, and then a power b plus c. If you have b plus c, it becomes a product of the two, uh, you know, powers a power b into a power c. Uh, these properties I'm not going to prove. These are these are very basic properties. You should have learned it earlier. I'm going to assume that you know this. A power B C is A power B whole thing raised to the power C. It can also be A power C whole thing raised to the power B. A B power C is A power C times B power C. And then A power minus B. So this is what lets us handle negative integers. A power minus B is one by A power B. Okay, so whether the integer is positive or negative, uh, one can do this very easily. Okay, so this is done, right? The properties are very, very useful and uh, they're quite, uh, I'm, I'm, I've illustrated it here. I'm not gonna go into detail, you can see uh, what I've done here if you're interested. So if A is real and uh, B is a positive integer or negative integer, uh, it's a very easy problem. So B is integer, we can do A power B very easily, okay? Now let's slowly push uh, to a case where A is real and B is a rational number, R by S, okay? So when you have a rational number like this, here's the trick you can do. A power B is A power R by S, which is the same as a power one by s raised to the power r. So here, I know this part okay, right? I'm okay with this part, raising to the power r. This is the part, raising to the power one by s, where I have to root the sth root of a, is where I may get stuck. But guess what? I know how to do sth root of a, right? I have my wonderful, wonderful recursive formula for the sth root of a, and I can pull that out, okay? So notice what I've done here. I can write a power one by s as the limit of sequence of a sequence u n, which is given in this form. Now, you know, a itself could be rational. If a is rational, this becomes a sequence of rational numbers, okay? And that's very nice. But if a is real, then I guess because of this a coming here, you may in general have a real number here. Uh, but you can think of a as rational, then you can work around it. And you have to choose your u1 suitably, right? You have to start suitably so that this limit will go to where you want. And it's possible, we have seen some interesting examples of how that happens, but in the uh, sth root case, you will get it. You will get, get it to converge to 
uh, the one one proper s root it does exist and it will work okay so this is my recursion for the s root so i'm going to define this a power 1 by s as a limit of a sequence of numbers and that i think is a very crucial idea when you do a power 1 by s particularly when a is rational also right so you can do this okay so it's when a is rational this is a sequence of rational numbers and that's particularly very very easy to deal with okay so a power r by s is simply a limit as n tending to infinity of u n power r okay now it turns out now that you can compute a power b when a is real and b is rational you can go through and work out all these properties and all these properties that held previously when b is an integer they hold for rationals also okay so whenever the power is rational also you can prove all these things once again i agree with you that these things need proof right you have to show that this limit and all that works but you know limit interchanges with all these properties very nicely with power and everything multiplication division and all that so because of that all these properties also go through very very cleanly and smoothly okay so we know how to do uh, powers when uh, i mean here are some examples i've just shown some examples of these properties and how you deal with them etc but bottom line is using this simple and clean idea of sequences and limits of sequences we are able to do this a power b when a is real and b is rational okay so of course maybe this real thing is a little bit worrying but maybe when a is rational also this is a very very easy straightforward computation to do okay so this is uh, a power b when b is rational okay the third case you may get right for real a b is if b is integer or rational a power b can be computed when b is irrational b could be irrational right a power b and b could be irrational uh, what are irrationals we've seen these before root 2 pi these are numbers that do not have a rational form but these numbers can be defined as limit of sequence of rationals we know that also right we have a root 2 sequence we have the pi by 4 sequence the madhava leibniz sequence so using those sequences we can define these numbers which are irrational as limit of sequence of rationals so what do you do when the power becomes irrational you want to evaluate a power b and b is irrational you again resort to limits in a easy way okay b is real for any real b whether it's integer rational irrational whatever there will be a sequence of rational numbers which converge to b okay so this is an important important uh, sort of assumption statement definition for real numbers you can take it as anything one of the many things i told you maybe it's a bit mystifying but that's how it is uh, later on in life if you are really theoretically inclined you can define uh, you can you can read more into how real numbers are defined okay it's, it's a bit of a complicated thing but anyway for us this is a very very acceptable notion so that you have for any real number whether it is irrational of course if it's rational or integer there's no problem if it is irrational then i can always have a sequence of rational numbers which converge to that real number so this is true this is sort of like the definition once i have this my a power b is very trivial right why because i can do limit as n tending to infinity a power u n and that gives me a easy way to do exponential now when u n is rational any real number raised to the power rational i know how to do right i have my s root formula and i will use that very very easily okay all these properties also extend for a power b when a and b are real okay so this limits here but then limit behaves very well with powers and all that so you can go in and uh, use the limit limit property and establish all of these wonderful properties for exponentiation okay so these properties for exponentiation are very important very many problems can be you know devised using these kind of things and you should be comfortable with manipulating exponentials okay so so, uh, so so just to drive home the point i want to show a few illustrations of how these computations of powers and exponentials is done a power b when a is real b is real okay let me start with this example of 2 power root 2 uh, for root 2 i have this sequence i know that the sequence uh, a n plus 1 is a n by 2 plus 1 by a n this guy converges to root 2 so to evaluate 2 power root 2 i'm going to make it limit as n tending to infinity 2 power a n a n is this sequence this number if you you can evaluate it uh, computationally 2 power root 2 on your computer you can put this on your calculator you can put this you will get 2.665 and look at the sequence 2 power a n okay 
it is starting off at 4, then it comes to above here and then you can see that it quickly it is converging somewhere to 2.665, okay. This is a stem plot graphical illustration of how 2 power root 2 is working, okay. And you may be even more adventurous, you can say I want to compute root 2 power root 2, right. A and B are uh, real here, I am going to try and look at this A n power A n, right. So, A n converges to root 2 and what happens if I do A n power A n? This root 2 power root 2, by the way, if you do on your computer or calculator, it is going to tell you 1.632, something like that. And notice what happens here. You start at 4, this a n power a n, and then you come down to some 1.78 <coughs> type number, and then quickly it settles down to 1.632, right, somewhere around that. You can try, not try it out. I have done only for 10 numbers. If you go over and over again in a long time, you will converge very quickly to this. So, notice how even this root 2 by root 2 is handled as a sequence of limits of rational numbers, okay. So, here is pi, okay, we are all, we all have a fascination for pi. So, here is a pi and pi and here is a sequence b n which is sort of based on the Madhava Leibniz uh, sequence. You can see I have done 4 times. Why have I done 4 times? Because this series goes to pi by 4. I want a series that, I want a sequence which goes to pi. So, I am multiplying by 4. So, this b n, if I go to the limit, I will go to pi, okay. So, how am I going to do 2 power pi? I am simply going to do limit as n tending to infinity 2 power bn. This is a rational number, sequence of rational numbers which are converging to pi. So, this uh, 2 power pi, if you do in your calculator, you will get 8.824. And notice my wonderful 2 power bn sequence. Uh, it is sort of, uh, you know, alternating up and down, up and down, but it is settling somewhere around 8.8, .8, okay. So, this I had to go up to 50 for it, slightly slower convergence. Maybe there are better converging techniques. Okay. So, here is pi power pi, just to show you adventurously. I am going to do b power n bar power b power n, right. See, both of these guys have to converge. What is below also has to converge to pi, what is above also has to converge to pi. I am doing b n power b n. And this pi power pi, if you do in your calculator or computer, you will see 36.462. And look at the convergence, it starts off very high and then it alternate, alternate, and sort of settling somewhere at 36.62. Okay. So, these examples hopefully uh, illustrate to you how exponentiation and power computation uh, can be done and this I want to remind you solves one of the problems we started off when we did limits, right. Uh, one of the amazing utility of sequences of rational numbers is to compute functions, compute strange functions like uh, you know this power, that power. So, now we, we are not going to be scared of computing functions anymore, right. Any function we want, we know we are going to rely on the sequence of rationals some sequence of rational is going to convert, converge to that function at that point, right. And I know I can execute uh, this kind of an idea to get more and more interesting functions, right. So, interesting functions like square root of x, 10 power x, x power 2 by 3, these are very interesting functions. I want to go beyond just linear functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions, polynomials, rationals, right. I want to go beyond those functions. I need things like root x, x power 2 by 3, I need 10 power x, right. How do I compute all this? I compute it using limits of sequence of rationals, okay. I hope this convinces you of one of the amazing utilities of limits uh, and calculus when you want to do function evaluation. So, function evaluation more or less is taken care of by going to limits of sequence of rationals, okay. Thank you very much.